Hey everyone, my name's Evan, and recently we just hooked up electricity to this livestock barn back here. And when we posted that video, you guys had a lot of uh, comments, a lot of good suggestions, you guys had a lot of questions. So uh, due to all those suggestions and everything, we kind of reconsidered some of the stuff here, and we've changed a little bit of the electrical setup in this barn back here. So I thought I'd make this video and kind of go over the changes that we made uh, to the electricity in the barn, and maybe answer a few of you guys' questions on why we did things the way we did. So let's go ahead and get in the livestock barn and I'll show you what we've done. So when we first wired the electricity up in the barn, we ended up putting a, a light bulb in the chicken coop that's actually on a timer. And we had that timed where it would stay on later at nighttime because we put this dust till dawn light out here. I was afraid the chickens would stay in the barnyard due to the light outside. So we put that the light in there to encourage them to be able to go into the chicken coop and find their way into the chicken coop. The, the problem was, you guys said, once that light goes out, it'll be dark and the chickens won't be able to find their way back onto a roost. And I believe you guys were right. I think when that light was going out, it went completely dark and the chickens didn't know what to do. They were all kind of like, ended up probably laying down wherever they were. So we've made a little bit of changes to the timers in here. I'll show you what we've ended up doing. So what we ended up doing is we added a second light on a timer. So we have a, a light back there and it is on a timer and it stays on longer. And it stays on long enough that the chickens have just enough light that they can find their way onto the roost. And I've tested this. So this light here will go off, the chicken coop will go dark. And then that light stays on for like another half an hour or so. And all the chickens will be able to make it onto the roost, no problem. So let me go ahead and turn this light on so you can see me better. So we ended up doing a two timer, two light bulb, two timer system. Uh, the reason we're doing that is, um, is because we are here at night to lock up the animals. So when we come in here to lock up the animals, we turn these lights on anyway, right? So even if the chicken coop was dark, as soon as I would turn on these lights, all the chickens back here, they would get off of the roosts and onto the ground. And uh, so even if I didn't have this light as a timer, when I came in and turned the lights on in the barn, and when I left at night, I'd turn it, if I would turn them off, they still wouldn't be able to find their way onto the roost. So this second light on a timer is working. Now, <clears throat> I did kind of make the suggestion I could leave this light on longer to, to help them lay. People suggested that's not the correct way of doing it. I didn't realize that. You're supposed to let the chickens fall asleep on the roost and then you turn the light on earlier in the morning and you give them a longer day by giving the, by turning the light on in the morning, not leaving it on at night. So, um, so right now the way we have it set up is this light will come on in the evening. They'll get in here. It will go off. The other light will be able to stay on long enough for them to find their way onto the roost. If I do want to um, let them like force lay them, give them more light and let them... Uh, more light hours to give more eggs in the winter time I can go ahead and make this timer basically put the uh, light on in the morning as well and get a longer uh, daytime but right now it's just on in the evening I think we've got that all fixed and I'm glad you guys said that because I didn't realize that the chickens uh, didn't know where to go once the light went out so uh, thanks for you guys suggestion I think the solution we have right now is fixing that
So one comment that I got asked several times is people want to know whether I put in GFCI outlets or whether I had GFCI, uh, a GFCI breaker in the breaker box back there. And so the, my thought process when I first installed this was, is there is no running water in this barn. Um, so in your house, when you put in electric in your house, GFCI outlets are really only required in the rooms that have water, like your bathroom and your kitchen. Um, so I kind of used that thought process. Well, that was kind of the wrong thought process. Um, there is an electrical code for agricultural buildings and agricultural buildings are considered a wet or a damp location. So everything in here needed to be rated for a, basically a wet location um, or a damp location. So that would require GFCI protection. So I did originally think about putting a GFCI breaker back in that box and that would have basically protected the whole circuit, but when it tripped, it would have tripped out every outlet. So what I decided to do is I didn't want everything in the barn to freeze if it tripped, so I ended up putting in individual GFCI outlets. So I've got some waterproof, you know, like your outdoor outlet boxes, and each one of them has a, a GFCI outlet in it. So that way if one trips, it's only gonna be one water bucket that'll freeze, because these are gonna be for heated water buckets in the barn. So when I was putting the electric in this barn, you're always trying to, re to use the material you have on hand and try not to have to buy a bunch of stuff, right? So I had extra outlets left over from building the house. So I was just thinking, let's just, where do I need outlets? You know, where am I gonna need outlets in a livestock barn? And I just put those outlets in, not thinking about were they the right type of outlets. So I just wasn't thinking straight when I did it. I just wanted to get it done. And um, so you guys asked a lot of questions, a lot of suggestions, got me thinking, you know, got my mind thinking. Of course, I looked up the code and it is considered a damp location by code and needs a GFCI. Um, and I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier because a garage, when you do a garage, it needs GFCIs also. So this isn't much different than a garage. So anyway, I do appreciate you guys bringing that up. It gets, it gets me thinking, rethinking if I'm doing things the right way, questioning things. And definitely putting the GFCIs in here was something that needed to be done. I'm not gonna argue that it wasn't, because uh, we will be in here with a garden hose. My last outlets didn't even have a cover on them, so you could have accidentally sprayed a hose right into them, possibly got shocked. So definitely a safety concern, and we got that corrected thanks to you guys. So now the all the lights are out in the barn except for the very back light. And you probably can't see it, but the chicken coop is right up there and there's still enough light that they can get on the roost. And you can hear them, hear them flying. They're all flying up on the roost right now. They're all finding where to go. So it's just enough light that it works and uh, don't have to worry about the, the chickens just laying on the ground at night. So when we started this project, we ended up running the electrical service to the barn from up here. This is where our meter is. This is where our electrical meter is. We tied into this breaker box. We trenched it all the way in back to the barn and powered up the barn that way. And that ended up costing us about $800 in wire, about $150 for the, the rental of the trencher. So it was roughly about $1,000 to get power back to the barn. I had lots of <clears throat> people want to know, why didn't I just they seen the electric pole back there it's got the transformer on it that is actually the the wire that comes over here and feeds this meter why didn't i just take power from there over to the barn or have the electric company take power from there over to the barn um, the reason has to kind of do with the overall cost and i'm not sure if it would cost anything for sure for the electric company to actually install they would have put a meter right next to the barn is what they would have done um, dropped a pole in there and put a meter. I'm not sure what the cost of that would be, but I do know that 
a new meter is a new electric bill and there is a $25 charge per month for an, for just to have an electric meter uh, and, and on and running so if I would have put another electric meter back there just on the monthly bills alone that would have been an extra $25 a month that I would be paying and basically over a three-year period that was going to add up to the thousand dollars that it cost for us to run the power back there so basically uh, overall running this wire back there basically pays itself off in three years and then after that we are saving we're going to be saving money on our electric bill rather than putting a new electric service back there <clears throat> so one other question i got asked a lot was why did i use aluminum wire not copper wire that basically just gets down to cost so aluminum wire is cheaper than copper wire it does require a bigger wire than copper you have to go with a just a larger wire size with aluminum because it doesn't carry as much current and even though you go with a larger wire size it is still cheaper now aluminum is not as good a product as um, copper if aluminum if like the insulation of this direct berry cable if it would somehow get damaged the aluminum would be uh, would eventually go bad underground so aluminum is not as uh, resilient as a product as copper either so it's not a, as good a product but it is cheaper and overall that's why we ended up kind of going that route is the aluminum wire cost us eight hundred dollars to run back there i priced the copper wire which would have been a smaller wire to run that back there and it was going to be twenty seven hundred dollars for copper wire so huge cost difference between aluminum and copper and that just did not fit our budget so we went with the aluminum so that rolls me into the next question, and that would be, why did I put it directly in the ground and I didn't put it in conduit? So that wire is a direct berry rated wire. It has a thicker insulation. It's made to go into the dirt directly in there. That's what it's designed for, and it did not require conduit. Now, you could have put conduit, you could have used conduit in the ground for sure, and there's two reasons why I think that you could have done that. Uh, one is it for sure the main reason would be added protection it would have helped protect that wire from maybe going bad over time um, and just you know it just been added protection for that wire the other reason would be is if the wire went bad you could have pulled the wire out of the conduit pulled a whole new wire in and not had to trench so to do that i would have the pvc that it would have cost to run all the way down there was going to be about 300 dollars in two inch pvc conduit and fittings and then you would have had the added labor, you know, of gluing that together and pulling the wire through there, which would have been a lot more work than just laying it in a trench. So overall, I felt that, you know, the $300 and the added labor probably wasn't worth it. So I decided not to use conduit. So one of the other comments that I got was about the heated water buckets. So they have a cord that plugs in to heat them up in the wintertime. And people were concerned that the animals would end up chewing on the cords. Well, so far I've never had any issue with that. That cord, when you buy that bucket, it has a wire that wraps around that cord. And I think that's to kind of prevent the animals from chewing on it. I may be wrong, but so far I haven't had any issues with it. Um, if it does become an issue, I could, you know, put a piece of like inch, inch and a half PVC in that corner back there and run the cord through that PVC to help keep the animals away from chewing it. But so far we haven't had any issues with animals wanting to chew on those cords. Well, I hope that kind of shows you guys the changes that we made down here in the livestock barn since the last video. And I hope that kind of helps explain uh, why I did things the way I did and why I made the choices I did when I set up the electrical down here. I'm not saying what I did is the right way of doing it. I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying it's the way you should do it. Uh, I'm basically saying this is the way that I did it and this is what works for me. So anyway, if you guys are interested in these videos, uh, follow along with us as we build our homestead and live the country life. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.